Thank you. Very excited to be here uh, today and uh, to be able to talk about two really great initiatives that uh, we're doing with Centerpoint Energy. Now, uh, long-time partners can have uh, disagreements. Uh, long-time partners can take each other for granted. Uh, sometimes uh, we uh, don't always recognize what the possibilities are in the relationships that exist. But this is, an op this is one example of long-time partners because obviously Center Point Energy has been a critical part of Houston for generations. Where longtime partners took an opportunity to rethink the relationship and reinvigorate the relationship. As you know, the city of Houston has been focused on improving our uh, sustainability, focusing on ways to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and to and, and one, one important way to do that is to cut our energy use. The city's municipal operations have uh, reduced emissions by 32 percent since 2007 when we first took a greenhouse gas emissions inventory and uh, we have aggressive goals moving forward. We want to continue to be one of the national leaders in this. But in addition to being good for the planet, if we can cut energy consumption, it's also really good for the city's bottom line. What we're about today is focusing on something that everybody sees, but nobody notices. And that is the streetlights across the city of Houston. There are 165,000 streetlights, and those streetlights have high pressure sodium, mercury vapor, vapor, and metal halide lights. They burn a lot of energy. And they don't always provide enough light. We have a solution. And thanks to Centerpoint Energy, we are going to be implementing that solution. And that is to convert 165,000 streetlights to light emitting diode or LED technology. This replacement project, uh, the largest in the nation, will reduce the city's streetlight energy usage by more than 50% reduce the city's municipal greenhouse gas emissions by another 5%, and just as importantly, save the city more than $28 million over the life of the project. So, yes, that is worth applause. We're taking the opportunity, in addition to making this conversion to the LED lights, to do some other things that will be helpful to our citizens as well. We're adding benefits such as transition lighting and tracking. Uh, we'll have better color rendering and uh, we hope the elimination of many of the dark areas between poles, increasing the safety of residents. We really want to, we want to have better light and we want to have it where we need it. Uh, we've already had great success with our conversion of LED traffic lights. And you may not have noticed the difference, but uh, several years ago we began a conversion of every, we have uh, more than 2,000 signalized intersections across the city, we converted to uh, LED traffic lights. And I don't know whether Centerpoint will have this experience, but uh, we had calculated a return on the investment just in energy savings and lower cost. And when we've, we installed the lights and we found out how much longer they lasted, that uh, when we factored in the additional savings of personnel in changing all of those 2,000 uh, intersections, changing the light bulbs in those 2,000 intersections uh, with street lights, we had a return on investment that was almost immediate. And so we are doing the right thing for the right reasons and it is saving the city of Houston money. But there is more. Uh, this isn't just about more efficient lighting and uh, more cost-effective lighting for the city of Houston. But we've also drafted a new understanding, a new agreement with Centerpoint Energy on how we use their rights of way throughout the city. As you know, we have a wonderful program going on right now, our BioGreenways 2020 program to put hike and bike trails along every major bio in the city of Houston. 
But if you look at a map of Houston, you will notice something interesting that the bios run roughly west to east. And not everybody, for some reason, wants to go west to east. And so we have to figure out ways to move hikers, bicyclists, north and south and connect to these new wonderful bio trails that we're putting in. A very apparent solution is these utility rights of way that cross the city and interestingly enough a lot of them do go north and south. But there were a number of hurdles to cross in order for us to do that and rightly Centerpoint Energy was concerned about their liability. It wasn't something that we could solve just at the local level. It required some assistance in Austin and in the last legislative session uh, two of our legislators became very engaged on this issue and I want to give a uh, particular shout out to Representative Jim Murphy who is here today right back here. He got behind this and uh, moved it forward. Senator Rodney Ellis was also engaged and very passionate about this issue. In, in short, we had to find a way to make sure that we could put people on these rights of way, on trails in these rights of way, uh, without increasing the liability to Centerpoint Energy. If they were going to give us an opportunity to use their, tr their space, we wanted to make sure they weren't punished in any way for that. And uh, with some uh, great legislative work and uh, a lot of strong support in Austin, it happened. Now, I want to, in addition to Centerpoint Energy and to Senator Ellis, State Representative Murphy, I want to thank my city team who has worked on both of these projects. Uh, city Attorney Dave Feldman uh, did an absolutely amazing job in getting this done, as did Deputy City Attorney Steve Kirkland, Sustainability Director Laura Spangin, uh, ARA Director Tina Paez, Parks and Recreation Director Joe Turner, Public Works Deputy Director Jeff Weatherford, and Chief Procurement Officer Lourdes Koss for the City of Houston. If you would give them a round of applause. They did the, they did the heavy lifting. I get to stand here and make speeches. They did all of the work.